Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be going over two pretty important theories in modular arithmetic. Now using these can help you solve even equations that don't really have that much to do with modular arith arithmetic, but you can use modular arithmetic in a way and these theories to actually solve the problem, Or and usually these are actually useful in proofs. So let's get started. Now the first theorem we're going to go over is Fermat's little theorem. And this theorem is essentially state essentially states that if a is any integer and p is a prime and that a is not a multiple of p then this following statement up here is true. Now, we're going to do a quick proof of this theorem by proving that a to the p is equal to a, is equivalent to a mod p. And what you'll notice is that these two are actually equivalent. It's just that Fermat's little theorem is written in this way. Now, we're going to prove Fermat's little theorem by using induction. Now, induction is a method that's extremely powerful, and if you don't know what it is, then you may want to check out one of my older videos about induction. Now, just a quick explanation. We're going to start with the base case, and then we're going to have an inductive step. So first, we're going to have our base case. Now, of course, the base case is 1a is 1. And we know that this satisfies all the cases, assuming that p is prime, because a is an integer, and it's never going to be a multiple of p. So our, with our base case, we have 1 to the p minus 1 is obviously equivalent to 1 mod p. So we have finished our base case. Now for our un inductive step, what we're going to prove is, assuming that a to the p is equivalent to a mod p, then a plus 1 to the p must also be equivalent to a plus 1 mod p. Now, we're actually going to expand this binomial using the binomial expansion method, which expands binomials whenever they're to a certain power. And this is extremely useful here because all we have is just a plus 1 for the binomial which means we have a to the p plus p choose 1 to the a to the p minus 1 plus p choose 2 times a to the p minus 2 and so on all the way down to p choose p minus 1 to the a times a to the p to the to the one power, first power, and lastly we have one as our constant. Now, this is all mod p, and we're trying to simplify this in a certain way. Sorry, mod p. So what we're going to try to do is simplify this expression. Now, what we're going to do is turn all of these to zero. Now, the reason why we can do this is because each and every one of these is all a multiple of p. Therefore, it simplifies to just 0, 0, and 0. Now, if you didn't know that, any prime choose some number down here, uh, let's say i, is a multiple of p. And that's also a pretty useful um, thing that you should know. However, it's not as useful as the theorems we're going over right now. Now, once we've done that, we have that a to the p plus 1. We have a to the p plus 1 mod p. However, we can simplify this even further because we were given that a to the p is equal to equivalent to a mod p. Therefore, the a to the p becomes a plus 1, and we are done because all we wanted to prove was that a, to the, a plus 1 to the p is equivalent to a plus 1 in mod p. 
So therefore, by induction, we have proven Fermat's little theorem. So here we have Euler's totient theorem. Now this isn't the totient theorem itself, this is the totient function. And what it does is it just finds the number of integers relatively prime. The, the totient function, it finds the number of integers relatively prime to n. Now the function itself is multiplicative, meaning that this statement that I just drew out here is true. Assuming that a and a and b are relatively prime. Now, once we have this, we can go on to Euler's totient theorem. What it states is that if we have a prime p and we put it to the function of n power, then we have that this is equivalent to 1 mod n. Now, we also have to assume certain things. There are, there are conditions for those too, for these var variables too. Of course, p must be prime, and p, p and n, I'm actually not that sure about this, p and n have to be relatively prime, and I'm not sure if this is true or not. But I do know that n can just be any integer, as long as they might have to be relatively prime. So if you do know if it's relatively prime or not, be sure to put that in the comments below, and I will put the answer in the description, and I'll pin your comment too. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And here's the proof for, for my little theorem and Euler's totient theorem. Thanks for watching.